see a project, see a business, see a model that you have, uh, something that you're working on and think about how can I make this leaner, right? How can I lean this out? Question number one, it's going to start to instigate this whole thought process in your head. You're going to start to see redundancies and it's like a, it's, it's like a, a kickstart, right? Like, uh, for, mm -hmm. for a different perspective on how to lean things out. So you focus on that for a minute. Raphael, thank you for joining me for our Thought Leader Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Matt Camp here, head of partnerships over at Deal Machine. And on these, we really like to shine a spotlight on industry experts like yourself. Um, you know, really hear your inspiring stories, educate our audience on the lessons that you've learned over the years. So uh, today, really excited to welcome on Rafael Cortez. Uh, you're known as the business systems guy. You've been in real estate since 2009. Uh, you're organizational psychologist. So want to deep dive into that. I'd love, love to hear about that. And then um, you own multiple companies in the space. So you've got your own fix and flip, you know, wholesaling business in Phoenix. Um, you've got a real estate brokerage. And then you also are a real estate coach. So you've got your education company with everything from podcasts, courses. You're on YouTube with our friend Brent all the time. You've got your Instagram. So you, you've got a lot going on, man. Thanks for taking time out. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, man. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I appreciate it. Awesome. So, so uh, to kind of begin with, I know um, you know I'd love to hear more about your real estate investing journey, how you got mm -hmm. started. You know, um, just can you, can you kind of tell us, you know, what, what brought you to here today? Um, so I started in 2009. I I, um, I I I was coming from a different industry altogether. So my first business, first business I launched was a a non emergency medical transportation business, and um and I mean transportation logistics and all that stuff gets really really crazy. So I, I wanted to invest somewhere else outside of that business, uh, and I started looking at at real estate. I did a, a couple of flips 2009 2010. Um, so that's kind of how I got my feet wet. I, I just, you know, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know, uh, back then. And, um, and eventually I made it over to, uh, to wholesaling. I, I, I started seeing on the settlement statements, assignment fees and, and that sort of thing. It's like, what is this thing? You know, what am I paying $18,000 for? Um, and I mean, it was just, it wasn't clarified. And then I ended up talking to the wholesaler. He kind of broke it down for me, which was really cool. Like I wasn't mad. I was just like, I was amazed at the opportunity. And then I was like, you know what? I'd rather, um, you know, focus on this side of the business uh, and, and, you know, have a shot at wholesaling stuff than, than uh, doing the flips and the, you know, flips and uh, flipping that I was you know doing at the time. So anyways, that's how we got started. 2009, I, I did a, a few deals there, um, wholesaling. Then I, I sold my business, the transportation business. And I, uh, I ended up, um, a working or a, Sean Terry sent out an email. He was looking for an acquisitions guy and I wanted to learn, right. I want to get like really bathed in the industry and learn from the best. And I was following mm -hmm. Sean, uh, for a while before, before that. So he sends this out. I ended up, um, I ended up, you know, asking to myself, like, if I'm going to go work for anybody and I hadn't worked for anybody else, like in the last, you know, call it eight years, nine years. Um, so it was, it was kind of like one of those things Am I, you know, am I giving you know, making a step backwards here, or is it something that's going to push me and propel mm -hmm. me? And it's like really like that arrow effect, uh, where you get the, uh, you get the, uh, the bow and arrow and then you pull it back. Right. You feel like you're, you're, you're walking backwards, but you're really not. So anyways, I go in there, I start getting exposed to a ton of, um, seller appointments, um, dial in my conversations, negotiation, figure out how to, you know, work, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the business all together. And my background is business development, um, through organizational psychology. So, so I started playing with systems, processes, and KPIs and whatnot. Next thing you know, I mean, I spent three years there with, with Sean, did really good. Uh, we parted ways and, uh, and I continued on, I, I continue, uh, wholesaling and, and, and doing my thing. So I've been, I've been at it since 2009 and, and just about, uh, I mean, every aspect of the wholesaling space. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, uh, the, the imagery of like the bow and arrow, like you said, where you're, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, cocking back, you're walking back to be then sprung forward. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. so and during, during those years, like during the, that kind of three year stint with Sean like that, what are some of the main things you walked away there? Like what, what are some of the things for, for our audience today? Like I know sales and negotiation and, you know, setting up processes, those are all things that they're thinking about right now. So if you can maybe yeah. share a few words of wisdom from that, that'd be great. Uh, so systems are good. You know, they'll eventually give you freedom and whatnot, but it's important not to, uh, not to get caught up in, in the, uh, and the, you know, having the right, you know, CRM, the right, you know, everything dialed into 100% before you actually take action. To me, one of the biggest lessons was uh, even in a business like that, I mean, it was rocky. 
It really was. Every week would come down, you know, we'd come back to the drawing board, uh, drawing board during the meetings and, and, you know, break stuff down. Like what happened last week? How can we, you know, you know, what are the KPIs? And you, and we kept tracking all that stuff, but none of that matters if you're not having the massive action behind it. Right. Which was the big thing. I was going on a mm-hmm. lot of appointments. Um, I wasn't used to rejection. My, my first, uh, uh career, was a firefighter, right? So firefighters show up. Everybody likes firefighters. Nobody has beef with firefighters. Cops, different story. But firefighters, like you're always, you know, welcome. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't sure. Uh, like I wasn't, I wasn't um, uh, used to that pushback. And I started going on seller appointments and making calls and doing, you know, uh, negotiation. And you get a lot of rejection there. So to me, that was one of the things that I had to wrap my head around. Like it's part of the business. Kind of build my mindset into it get uh, more proficient with my uh, conversations, understanding the, the overall process um, and how to explain it to, to sellers was a big, big, big thing. Uh, so a lot of that, I mean, mm-hmm. just it came, really, really came down to repetition. So I made an intentional um, effort every single time I went on a seller appointment to, okay, what's happening right now? Like, what are we doing? Um, what am I going to walk away with as a lesson from this, you know, the seller appointment? And then I would debrief that. Like every single appointment, I would sit, there for a couple of minutes after the fact and then I ask myself what went right what went wrong and then do more of the stuff that went right and then cut the other stuff out that sort of thing so um it, it uh repetition was a huge huge thing um for for yeah. for that learning curve to get you know a lot shorter yeah yeah i love that i mean you know you saying like hey you know building a process is a process in itself you know you're like yeah. you're you're always evolving i love how you're sitting down and reflecting and and you know being able to always get better from every conversation yeah. um yeah i think that's one thing we really help uh you know people try to realize as well is is taking action is really like the bottom line you know commonality among everyone who's been successful in this is that you know, you don't, you don't feel like you need to know everything you don't feel like you need the perfect process because when you take action at some point that process is going to be ripped up, you know, at some point, like yeah. you're going to realize you, don't, you aren't fully prepared for every, everything. And like, you're going to learn from those reps and from getting out there and from improving over time. So, um, and everything's different. Really what, what, uh, like the big learning is not the scripts. It's not, it's mm-hmm. the, the adaptability of it. Understanding that you're going to have to move along, you know, the, the, the currents as you go through a deal, as you go through a conversation, uh, you know, sometimes we have to shift, uh, and, and different aspects of the business, right? Uh, recently, as of what, June 15, call it, um, everything got crazy in our market and, and close to December. So a lot of the, uh, the emphasis shift, shifted from, from, um, from the sellers to the buyers. Like people are having issues on the buyer side. And, and uh, I think taking that, uh, that uh, principle across the board, right? Having that, the ability to adapt is, is huge. And you start adapting in conversations and the smaller things like that. And then you can, you know, kind of compound and scale that as you, as you progress and actually build a business. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Love that mindset. Um, one thing I know you, you touched on it here, and, and this is something that I think would be super useful for our audience, you know, uh, you know, just seller communication in general, which is so important to, to be able to easily explain the process to people. Can you maybe yeah. walk through that for our audience too, of like how you would have a conversation with a seller, how you would explain that process really clearly and easily? I just think our audience would really like that as well. Yeah. So, so I can give you, um, I'll give you the uh, kind of like the, the, the skeleton structure of, of the way that, uh, that uh, I process conversations and my team does. Right. Um, we, on the, on the sourcing side, there's the, there's different stages to a conversation. First off, you're going to source a seller, and, and all that is is gauging for interest. It's a very, very uh, short, basic conversation. You know, are you interested in an offer on, on you know, so-and-so property? Um, the way that you get to that seller, uh, it's going to vary, right? They're going to come at you from, you know, cold calling, from driving for dollars, using, you know, deal machine and, and you know, systems like that, right? Um, but you, you have to put yourself in front of them and engage for interest. That's the first thing. Uh, so it's it's not this a big fat elaborate um, script that you're going you know into right away because it's just going to waste your time. So you're you're mm-hmm. plowing through through uh, through that initial portion of the conversation. The second thing is is think about pre qualifying your your sellers. Um, now that you have interest, maybe they want a million bucks for a, a three hundred thousand dollar property, right? It's not necessarily a, mm-hmm. a, a somebody who we're, who we're going to do uh, business with. Uh, so you pre qualify the sellers, and for this, we go back to you know simple principles: condition, timeline, motivation, and, and price. Um, to us, if we have two out of four 
in my company. We have two out of four, two of those. Uh, we have, say that the condition is beat up and then the timeline matches. Uh, we'll push it over to acquisitions and then start a discovery conversation. So you go from interest to pre-qualification to discovery. Uh, and that discovery conversation is more organic. Uh, you have to understand rebuttals. You have to understand, okay, but it, it, you know the uh, what to answer right on, to certain things. But but it's not it's not a robotic you know scripted type of conversation. There has to be that human uh, uh, element behind it. Um, this sure. is where rapport right the, really gets built, where you make that connection. And it's not about selling or convincing. It's really about finding out what the what the real problem is. They come to us. Um, wholesalers because they're not, you know, for some reason they're considering us instead of going to the retail market. What is that reason, right? Is it because they're getting relocated? Is it because they have, you know, a, a lot, a ton of, I don't know, we get hoarder houses on a regular basis. They're embarrassed. People don't, you know, people don't want people walking through these properties. So they rather talk to one person um, than they go through the MLS and have people walk through the property. They have, they're overwhelmed. They don't have, you know, they, they have no idea how to clear it up or clean it up and make it market ready, that sort of thing. So there's going to be a lot of things that play into it. But on that discovery conversation, it's really about finding out what, what that problem is and how we can solve it. We're, we're our, our thing as wholesalers, our superpower has to be, uh, solving problems that that's what we are we, we, you know we're the fixers um, and um, and understanding you know that a conversation flows that way it kind of becomes organic right like you don't spend too much time with people who uh, you know they're not going to end up doing business with you um, you you're able to pre-qualify leads and 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 understand kind of where you're at you know based on 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 uh, an established structure but then you also don't lose that element of humanness to it People want to have that, you know, that connection to feel like they're not talking to a computer or a script, right? Uh, or right. they don't want to feel like they're being sold. And that's the thing. When you're going through this discovery conversation, it's not about selling them on you. It's, it's about finding out what the problem is so you can come in and fix it, help them out, and then make a profit out of that as well. So... And then from that point forward, the last section, of course, is the negotiation, which is really once everything else is settled, just coming to terms on a, on a price point. But it just it's a progressive uh, movement throughout that conversation. So to recap, I guess, um, the way that I break down um, our conversations is, you know, sourcing, pre-qualifying, discovery conversation and then negotiation. So love that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think in general, um, having that problem solver mindset, that is, that is huge. I mean, you're, that is, uh, you know, going into it, like you, like you said, you're, you're not trying to sell them. You're trying to discover their, their issue and be able to solve yeah. the problem for them. And I think, you know, um, now more than ever, you talked about the market now more than ever, like we have more opportunities to do that, to find people who have financial problems that we can solve. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think as well, like one thing that Brent has talked about, uh, you know, Brent Daniels, I know you're on with him every week, you know, on, on their live stream as well. That's a good friend. Uh, love that he talks about, Hey, we are a deal. We're not a deal maker. We're not selling people. We're a deal finder. You know, we're trying to discover right. motivation rather than, than sell to somebody who doesn't want to move, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah. 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 Another thing that uh, comes, comes along with that repetition is the ability to like, to, to, to realize like, okay, what's, what's, what's going on? There's distress, right? But it's not only physical distress. You have uh, financial distress. You have circumstantial distress. Uh, you have, you know, sometimes people are in dire distress, but you can't see it because the house is decent. The house is clean. The house is well kept. Uh, but there's something else going on. You, you, can't, you can't see that stuff from the curve, right? You have to actually engage. You have to actually mm -hmm. get in front of people um, and then go through, through this, this, uh, this effort of, of discovery. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very, very important. I mean, that's really the basis of the whole thing. It's crazy. We don't, we don't open our mouths. We don't, we don't make money. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And being a great listener, like you said, I mean, I, I think yeah. um, one thing, and a lot of this does tie into this, but uh, one thing I found super interesting was your background and kind of the organizational psychology, you know, being an organi organizational, really a, a business psychologist in the end. Oh, um, yeah. Can you talk to like what got you into that, you know, how you found it applying to real estate, you know, what, what's made, how that's been made useful in your real estate career? So um, I launched my first business when I was 21 years old. I was still working at the fire department. And, um, and I mean, I didn't know anything about business. Uh, so I started, I went to the uh, small business administration. I started looking for templates on business plans and just kind of digging, you know, my way through, through the knowledge um, 
you know, branches and whatnot. And, and I came across a few people that did help me, but I had a lot of questions. And so I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to go, I guess I'm going to go back to school. And I, I, by then I had already launched a business with so many mistakes. You know, I paid a lot of dumb tax and, 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 you know, that sort of thing. It's pretty, it's pretty common for bootstrap uh, businesses, especially for people who are uh, like me and they're like, no, I know what I'm doing. I got this. And then they, they decide to not, you know, cut the curve or, or listen to better advice than what we have in our heads. Um, that was me back then. Um, so anyways, a lot of questions. And, um, and uh, I went back to school. I got a, um, a bachelor's in business administration and servant leadership. And I, I, I mean, I was having a, a conversation with a counselor. She goes, I mean, what other, like, what else do you like? You already have the business and you have the bachelor. So you don't necessarily need a degree. Like I wasn't needing, you know, a degree to get hired or anything. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to look into something that, that I'm, you know, intrigued and I actually enjoy. And psychology has been, you know, has always been one of those, one of those things, like, favorite subject in, in, in high school and that sort of thing. Right. I was like, all right, I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to get a master's degree in psychology, general psychology. So I went through that. And right before I wrapped up, it was like halfway through my last semester. I think um, I discovered that they had organizational psychology. It was like, crap, I should have, I should have gone with that. <laughs> like it's in, in what it is, it's the understanding of people and systems. Right. By that point, um, I, I had to get systematic because my, my original business was, transportation there's no way to run a transportation business if you if you're all over the place right so that kind of forced me to to clear up my my process um, understand what to track and that sort of thing and I brought that in uh, into into the wholesaling the real estate space so um, I I decided to go for a second master's degree in organ, or organizational psychology and that's kind of how I ended up but I, I would the cool thing about it was that, like I would learn something like principles or, or you know something in class and then I would go apply it in my business the next day. So it's, it's, it uh, became one of, one of those things that, you know, as I was learning, I was, you know, applying as well, learning and applying, learning and applying, uh, instruction and action really what, what it came down to. So it did help me a lot. Um, and now I use that. I mean, I use the same principles and all that stuff for, for coaching, consulting, and the way that I build my businesses and processes, you know, place into, into that as well. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of one of those, those things that I, I, I was lucky enough to, to, uh, have a conversation that somebody planted the seed and then they just grew. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, like, is that, is that uh, something that you think separates you on the, on the business, on the uh, real estate coaching side? Like, does that affect your, your approach and, you know, make you unique in that way? Absolutely. I mean, and, and not to say that you need degrees to, to be a good coach or, I mean, experience will, will, will be all you need in a lot of the cases. Right. Uh, I just, um, to me, what it does is it just gives me a different perspective on on problem solving on on approaching things right uh, besides that um um the uh the bootstrap you know way of doing business um so so but it does i mean it really does uh play a big big part in the way that uh you're going to automate the, the business you're going to start to delegate uh one of the big uh, big things that i believe in is that hustle is a season right we all start hustling at the beginning we have this um, hustle season that we go through but it's really not it's not a business strategy you can't hustle forever it's not sustainable so, so uh, hustle is a season. It's not a business strategy. You have to figure out how to think like an entrepreneur and get out of that hustler mindset. Um, as, as you go through the process of building the business, you gain experience. Again, you get instruction and action, and then this, this, this evolution within you, yourself starts to happen. Um, so I think having just background in that space, right? Now, there's no, there's no question that I, you know, I can hustle through things, but I've learned that I can do a lot more, a lot better um, if, if I apply myself and actually, you know, approach it in a, in a more of a systematic way, um, when it comes to yeah. The results. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, uh, speaking of kind of, you know, your, your coaching approach and then also the systematic, you know, building systems in your real estate business in general, I right. know you're launching that wholesaling fast track masterclass and, uh, thanks for the shout yeah. out to us in there too. Really appreciate that. But, um, you know, I, I know within that you really help people, uh, think about you know their their wholesaling business and the the systems that they need to build around that. Can you maybe break down that kind of less acronym that you use and really do a deep dive on? Hey, here's here's how to be thinking about your wholesaling business. Um, yeah. So the less uh, the I, I, it's uh, I call it I came up with the less business more profits model. Right in my in my head it's sexy it's catchy uh, and uh, less meaning lean, effective, strategic, and simple. 
Uh, it's an acronym. So the word less is, is it's an acronym for, for that. So lean, effective, strategic, and simple. And it, it's really how I approach anything that I, that I tackle now. Uh, if I'm looking at even a flip, man, I mean, you can bring those principles over to a flip. But if you can see a project, see a business, see a model that you have, uh, something that you're working on, and think about how can I make this leaner, right? How can I lean this out? Question number one, it's going to start to instigate this whole thought process in your head. You're going to start to see redundancies. And it's like a, it's, it's like a, a kickstart, right? Like uh, for, mm -hmm. for a different perspective on how to lean things out. So you focus on that for a minute. Um, and then you want to make sure that it's, uh, it's effective. Like anything that you're leaning out and anything that you still have in place, make sure that it's effective, right? Um, not necessarily efficiency and effectiveness, two, two totally different things. Um, you can be very efficient mm -hmm. at stacking... Uh, I don't know, paper clips, <laughs> but, but is it really going to be effective to the bottom line? Right. So to me is, is having that clarity over effectiveness um, and making sure that you have, you know, that within your business um, strategic, everything that you're doing in your business has a purpose, every action, every, every stage, uh, every KPI, you, you don't just have bulk, you know, um, tracking for the sake of tracking everything's strategic right uh, again that's going to mm -hmm. feed the 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 leanness of the business and then simple if you can't make something simple enough um so your team can use it they're not going to use it so so that's why you have these you know a lot of you know great companies and whatnot but you have you know they're so robust uh that you know the reports are are failing you need trainings for the trainings of the trainings uh and uh, and and you know, become so heavy so that what happens the team just checks out um and then you know performance starts to dwindle and all that stuff so uh lean effective strategic and simple if you can bring that and i brought that into it, it's i i built that into my wholesaling business i actually broke it down into six stages um, but it, it covers, it covers the four elements, right? It's lean, it's effective, it's strategic, it's simple. And, and I think, I mean, it's, it's, uh, that was a game changer for me when I started thinking about business that way. So love it, man. Yeah. I mean, I think especially that E that effective piece, like that's something that I think a lot of people, uh, might struggle with from going that, from that hustler mindset into the entrepreneur mindset of how do you scale something or how do you step out of something and, and keep it effective and actually yeah. not lose quality, not lose the execution of it. Do you yeah. have any tips there for people to, to overcome that or to, to, to make that transition and, and, you know, help them, you know, be able to, to build a business that stays effective? Uh, yeah, the first one would be to reverse engineer. So reverse, uh, there's going to be a couple of things. Uh, first one is going to be reverse engineer uh, your goal, whatever goal you have. Keep it one, keep it in front of you 24 seven. I mean, uh, right now, if I look to my left, I have this focus board next to it, it says targets and I, I'll write out targets on a monthly basis. This is what I want to hit this month. This is, this is kind of like the, the guiding beacon, right? For me. Um, but you have to reverse engineer what that, uh, what that's going to require. So, so I don't know, say that you want, you want to make $50,000 in sales, right? Okay. What does that look like? Um, the, uh, the effectiveness factor comes, it's gonna, it's gonna almost present itself because you start thinking from the end, right? Like if I have $50,000, what happened right before then? Oh, well, I had to have, um, I don't know, 50 clients because each one pays me a thousand bucks. Okay. To get 50 clients, what happened before? Well, I had to have this marketing campaign and this product and this thing and this thing and this thing, right? So you reverse engineer the whole thing to the, uh, to the beginning, to the point of inception from where you get the, uh, the, uh, the client, uh, through the door. Right. And then you have this, this whole, like, you know, timeline of what's happening along the way. Now, when you have that picture and we have when you have that level of clarity on on what's required to make something happen then you can get crafty and all right you know what this is a redundancy that's the second part right El eliminating redundancies okay what am i doing twice uh what can i combine what can i you know uh knock out i don't know at a different stage of the project so i don't have to worry about it three times um and that sort of thing i like to keep things in linear fashion um and not you know having to jump back and forth when I'm looking at, uh, at the, the, I love the whole conveyor belt, uh, um, you know, a model, right? It's hard to do sometimes depending on what industry you're in. Uh, but if you keep things in linear fashion, uh, that actually plays very well to the way our brains work, right? So you don't have to adapt too much. You don't have to, there's not so much confusion. There's a lot more accountability because you know, you know exactly what part of the process you're in. So, um, yeah, it'd be one thinking from the end, reverse engineer, uh, whatever you're building, uh, two, figure out what the redundancies are and then make it linear. So you have that level of accountability and clarity of, of where you're headed. Um, 
mix those three, man, you have something that's effective. Yeah. yeah that's super powerful. I, lo I love thinking about it in that, like you said, conveyor belt, uh, you know, <clears> fashion. And then going one step further too, like on the delegation side, like how do you, you know, automate things? How do you delegate things? How do you move things from your plate to be more efficient while keeping the effectiveness? Do you have any yeah. thoughts there of how to, how you go through that process and understand this is something that I can delegate or, Oh, I should keep this uh, is on, on my plate. Um, yeah. So, so figure out what the roles are. And this is, this is more on the, the business, business design type of, type of, um, um, aspect. Right. And then you're going to, because you're going to have roles, you're going to have responsibilities. You think of them as like different hats, right. But what roles do you, uh, are you covering? And, and it doesn't matter. Like one of the, one of the, uh, the, the, the things that I come across with, with students quite a bit is like, Oh, I'm, I don't have a team of three people or four people or five people. Uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, what lead generation, you know, department is doing, what, what acquisitions, like, that's mm -hmm. wrong. Um, you have to, you have to think of things that way, because even if you're a solo operation, you still have to understand what part of the transition you're in, right? So if you segment, for example, I have six stages in my wholesaling business. Stage one is sourcing. Stage two is converting. Stage three is acquisitions. Stage four is dispositions. Five is measuring and six is improving. So those six stages across the board, and there's actions that kind of fall uh, underneath each one of those. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing is when you when you figure out what your 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 um, your stages are within your business, like you can start delegating that particular stage. So one thing that I see, you know, often happen is like people will hire a really good acquisitions rep, um, bring them on board, train them, and everything, and then have them cold call. Uh, like no, that's like you, you're you're wasting that. You know, you're putting strain on that uh, on that talent. Of closing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You wanna you wanna delegate, you know, a different portion of that particular responsibility, um, because their talent, you know, is in, in actually negotiating, discovering, and 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 getting signatures on the contract, which is very different than, for example, the uh, the the what you need for cold calling. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I think it's a lot, a lot of it are, again, comes back to, uh, to clarity. What exactly are you delegating? And is that one single task when you delegate, um, make sure that you're delegating with accountability, not just, Hey, listen, I, I'm going to give you a thousand records here or 10,000 records a month. Um, knock them out. Okay. No, what happened? We come back and, and, and revisit, you know, your KPIs on a weekly basis, look at performance and it doesn't take long, man. If you have, um, um, if you do the setup right, it's not going to take too long. We have we have a an operations meeting every Tuesday. Um, lead generation jumps in, acquisition jumps in, dispo jumps in. We all you know come in, look at the KPIs, look at the scorecard performance, what's happening on the campaigns, what worked last week, what didn't work last week. Uh, come in, boom, and then you know knock that out for an hour, and and everybody goes back to to execution. My team is virtual, so I do have people yeah. that come to the office every now and then, but most of them work virtual. So it's, it. it's, it's, yeah. it's not that difficult to delegate if you have the right, um, um, accountability to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's absolutely the key. Like you said, the metrics and then, you know, that sixth stage of, of, you know, proving that. So, um, this has been awesome, man. Yeah. You're, you're very, very good at breaking down, you know, what could be a big, uh, you know, hairy, uh, you know, convoluted thing and, and putting into simple steps and saying like, Hey, think about it in this <laughs> conveyor belt fashion. So, uh, I appreciate yeah. you coming on. Like, thank you. Appreciate your time today. Um, yeah. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you too? Um, you know, we'd love to have our audience connect with you. Yeah. I'm pretty active on social media. So, um, Instagram, um, I look at all the DMS the messages and all that stuff. Uh, Rafael Cortez CEO is my handle. Um, you can find me like that on Facebook. I do have a Facebook group. It's REA wholesaling. Um, just like the website. So if you want to find out about, you know, coaching and, and what I have in terms of, I actually have a free course where I break down the stages in detail and that's, that's absolutely free. And it's at REI wholesaling.com. So yeah. awesome. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll link to that. I know we'll, uh, we'll have free resources on our end as well. I'll link, like we've got our scaling your REI ebook and a variety of things linked here too. So, um, yeah. Raphael really, really appreciate the time. Man. This was a great conversation. So thanks so much, man. I appreciate the invite, bro. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to everyone watching, this is Matt Camp with Deal Machine and uh, happy deal finding.